Hi everyone, today I would like to show you how to install Ubuntu 14.4 on your PC. It's a fairly simple process and by the time I'm finished with this tutorial you should have a good idea of how this works and be ready to do it on your own. So to start things off, we want to head over to Ubuntu's website. And once we're here along the top menu, we're going to go to the downloads page. And we're looking for Ubuntu desktop. So we'll click on that, and you see here they have their Ubuntu 14.4 long-term support. This version will be supported for the next five years with updates and security patches. Now, depending on your machine, you're either going to want to download the 64-bit or 32-bit machine. As a rule of thumb, if your computer is older than about six years, you're probably going to want to go with the 32-bit. Likewise, if you're using a netbook or a Chromebook, you're more likely to want the 32-bit, depending on how much RAM it has. If it has less than 3 gigs of RAM, it's recommended that you download the 32-bit. So once you choose that, you'll click on Download. And then you'll have the option, if you really like Ubuntu, to donate to them. Um, but if not, you can scroll down to the bottom left and click on Not Now, Take Me to the Download. And then once you click this, your download should begin automatically. You'll have to choose where you want to save it. Um, by default, if you're using Firefox, it will save in your downloads folder. And as you can see, it's a fairly large file at 981 megabytes. So depending on your internet connection, this could take a while, anywhere from five minutes to over an hour. So you need to be aware of this before you begin. Now I've already downloaded this file, it's an ISO image, and so I'm going to hit cancel and we'll back out of here for now. Now before we can go on, on into booting from this ISO, we need to burn it either to a CD or a flash drive. Um, both are very easy processes, however I prefer using my flash drives because I got a whole bunch of them lying around and it's super easy for me to take a bunch of distributions and throw them on one flash drive. And the way I like to do this is I like to use a program called Yummy, which stands for Your Universal Multiboot Installer. And it's a free program. You just head on over to their website, pendrivelinux.com, and if you scroll down, you can download it for Windows. And they also have a version for Linux as well. However, in this case, I prefer the Windows version because it has a few more features that I like. So you just click download and then save it wherever you want. Um, I like having mine right handy on the desktop right here. So what you'll do is you'll plug in your flash drive into your PC. And then once that's in, you will start up Yummy, run through the security checkpoint and the terms of service. And then simply all you have to do is from the drop down menu select your flash drive. Now if you choose to show all the drives, a word of warning, be very careful. Um, this will list everything that you can burn to. That can be good and that can be bad. Um, if you're a beginner I suggest you just don't turn this on at all because you have the potential to damage system files if you go this route. So just a word of warning, um, make sure you know what you're doing if you decide to show all drives. Um, but if you're just burning to a flash drive, really you're fine just leaving this unchecked. So you select your flash drive and then the next drop down menu gives you a whole bunch of distributions that you can choose from. Now for this tutorial we're going with Ubuntu which is up here at the top. And as you can see this is for both the 32 and 64 bit versions. So once you select this, if you hadn't already downloaded it, you can click the download link and then it will take you to the page to download the ISO. So that's the second way to do that. So once you have this selected, you'll click the browse and then you'll navigate to the ISO that you downloaded. You'll click open and then you'll click create. And once you hit create, the process is really easy. It only takes about three minutes to burn it to a USB. So once that is done, you're ready to restart your computer and
on boot from your USB. If you've never done if you've never done this, it's a fairly easy process. What you'll simply do is you'll restart the computer, and you have two on most PCs. You'll have two basic ways that you can burn or that you can boot from this USB. The first way is you can boot into BIOS, which is typically by default F2 on a PC. So when you see the first splash screen come up once you restart, tap F2, go over to the boot menu, and put your flash drive as a first object to boot from. The second way that you can boot into your USB is on most splash screens when you start in they have the little um, options at the bottom like for F2 you'll boot into BIOS and then it will say like F12 or F8 or escape will boot into boot order so depending on who your manufacturer is it will be a little different but you'll just tap the corresponding key and you will boot into your USB drive so once you do that you will um, be able to boot into your new um, pen drive Linux. Now for this tutorial I'm going to show you I'm going to use VirtualBox to demonstrate this um, and this will simulate putting Ubuntu on a PC with no other operating system on it. So what we do is I'll simply click start and we'll let this fire up and aside from this screen right here, this is what you're going to be seeing once you boot into your USB. So you see we got the little Ubuntu loader. And it should just take a few moments to load. And it's usually pretty quick. Okay, so here we have Ubuntu 14.4 ready to go. Over the last couple years, Canonical has gotten a lot better with the way that you can install Ubuntu. It's a lot more streamlined than it has been in the past. So, okay, once you've booted into your Ubuntu ISO, you're greeted with two options. Option one is to try Ubuntu. And if this is your first time with Ubuntu or with Linux in general, then I would recommend that you go with this option of trying it. And what this means is you can mess around with the files, with the settings, um, different programs, all from the live CD without affecting your computer at all. And then once you're ready to make the jump into it, it's just a button click away. They'll have a little install box that you click on. So that's a good option if you're new to this. Um, if you're wanting to just try it out but you're not really sure if you're ready to commit yet, then go with that option. The other option is to install it and this is the one we're going to be using for today's demonstration. This is for when you know that you're ready to um, dive headfirst into this. Now before we start this, we have a couple things that we need to check off. Um, you're going to need at least six gigs of hard drive. Um, it is recommended that you plug into a power source and if you want to download the third-party updates and proprietary software you will need to have a working internet connection. So those are just a couple things to keep in mind. Um, up here you have your network icon and the up and down bars will show up if you have a ethernet cable plugged in. If you have a wireless card it will have a wireless icon and all you have to do is type in click on your wireless router and type in your password and then carry on from there so those are just a couple things that you need to keep in mind and then you'll be ready to hit continue now we need to choose our installation type and you'll have several options on this page one option that is not showing right now is if you already have windows installed on your PC you will have an option to dual boot it alongside Windows 7. And this is an option that a lot of people take. Um, it allows you, when you first turn on your computer, to choose whether you want to boot into Ubuntu or if you want to boot into Windows, like Windows 7 or Windows 8 or whatever. 
So that's a good option, and you'll be able to choose how much space Ubuntu takes and all of that. Um, this option, erase disk and install Ubuntu, will erase everything. Um, so if you have an operating system already installed and you have like pictures and games and other files, this option will delete all of that and just wipe it off the face of the earth completely. And will install Ubuntu as your main OS. Another popular option is something else and here you can choose different partitions and you can resize and adjust them to how you see fit and you have a lot more um, ways to customize how you want this to fit onto your hard drive. So that's a good option but it's a little bit more advanced so just be aware of that. But for this demonstration we're just going to choose to erase disk and install in Ubuntu. I'm, again I'm in VirtualBox so we're just using a virtual hard drive right now and this won't affect me in any way. So we'll just go ahead and click install now and let that get itself ready. Um, and then once it's ready, we need to choose our time zone. And this is for your clock to display the correct time. And after that, to choose our keyboard layout. I am from the US, so I'm just going to stick with the default US keyboard. I do speak English, so that's nice. And then we need to put in some information like who we are. And then it is recommended that you use a password for security. And then again for security, I prefer to have mine require my password every single time I log, log in. And then once you hit continue, um, you're ready to go. It will install Ubuntu 14.4. Once it finishes copying all the files, you'll be prompted to restart. And then you'll have your shiny new operating system. So I'm going to pause it here and I'll be right back. After you complete the installation, you can reboot the system and log in with the information that you provided earlier. Once you do so, you'll be greeted with the new Unity interface. And from here, you can begin to customize it as you see fit. And most people like to start off by changing their background. So it looks nice. And then from here on out, you can download software from the Ubuntu Software Center um, and if you don't find anything there you can always go onto Firefox and look for programs. One nice thing about Ubuntu is if you hold down the Super or Windows key you'll be greeted with a list of keyboard shortcuts um, and these are really handy for navigating around the Unity interface and they will save you a lot of time. So. That's pretty much it. From here, you're, you know, the best thing for you to do now is to just go out and play with it for yourself and just learn about all the different ins and outs and overall have fun. So thank you for watching and be sure to check for future tutorials and how-tos.